Private Ocean is and always has been very academic, very theoretical. We, we believe in principles. And we think that, that that gives us a consistency and it also gives us a framework to apply. So we think that gives us the discipline and the framework we need. And I can't say that that started when I got here. That was at the beginning of Private Ocean's life. They were very academic and, and very principled. Always has been. I think that's a really important point. When, when I think about and when we think about investment strategies and investments, there are two fundamentally different aspects to that. One is kind of the, is the theoretical, quantitative uh, formation of the portfolio based on portfolio principles. That's kind of the, the portfolio that you will see on a piece of paper. In addition to that, we are very conscious of psychological behavioral effects. So there's the scientific portfolio, which is very, very important. And there's the behavioral psychological parts that are very, very important. And we're very conscious of, of marrying those two very, very different disciplines together. I can remember October 1987, Black Monday, not only where, what I was doing and who I was talking to then, I can remember the previous working day on Friday and the decisions I was making then. That's a kind of impact. If you're in financial services business, if you're in the advice business and investment, that's the kind of impact that these events make on you. You'll never forget them. And there'll be lessons learned and continue to be learned for many years uh, uh, after the fact. The interesting question that comes up after these events is, what do I do now? What should I do to protect myself? The unfortunate answer is, I'm sorry, it's too late. The better answer is, you're fine. We've already prepared for this event. 2008, the S&P went down 37% in 12 months. Most people would have thought that could not happen. That was off the radar screen. That was a, a non-event. What happens when, uh, when people experience a, a, a really terrible outcome, minus 37%, what do they do? Their psychology, their physiological makeup makes them do what they did when they saw a dinosaur on the plains, run into the cave, get away from that danger. For many, for many investors uh, that, and many professionals in the business, um, some lessons learned are easily forgotten. And, uh, and people have to be constantly reminded of well, what's happened in history, and not only what's happened in history, but the way things ought to work in the future. As I always tell my, my students, you can, we want to do all smart things, but you can lose a lot more money doing stupid things than you can make doing smart things. The problem is that all of these crises are very different. If they were simple, they wouldn't be a crisis. Uh, so, it's very challenging to protect yourself and to have a portfolio that is both efficient and protects against these scenarios. One question would be, how much pain can you stand in terms of, I lost 10% of my portfolio. I lost 20% of my portfolio. How much it involves a serious pain and a change in your lifestyle or if you're a corporation, a change in your actual strategy. Well, after minus 37% in 2008, since then the S&P has been more than tripled. More than tripled. And a lot of people sold out. They, ex they experienced most of the minus 37% and they've missed the tripling. So the behavioral element of investment management is incredibly important. What is the risk tolerance? Of the, of the investor. And that comes out of a detailed financial planning process that we do. I think it's critically important understanding how much risk can you take. What you want to be in is a position where you are in a hedge effectively, where you think about all the possible scenarios that can happen that would damage your possibilities for a good lifestyle, for example, 
uh, your wealth and your, your family's wealth. And you put in place investments that would do relatively well in those scenarios. That's a hedge. It may reduce the overall return in your portfolio slightly, but it improves the risk profile significantly. It's effectively like buying insurance, but you don't want to buy too much insurance. You want to buy just the right amount that's associated with how much pain you can sustain in a, in a troubling scenario. I had a conversation with Harry Markowitz, who won a Nobel Prize uh, in 1990 for this. He said uh, a minus 37% every once in a while is part of the market. If we didn't have minus 37%, the average return on the stock S&P might be 10% rather than 12%. And the only reason it's 12% is because that minus 37% every once in a while is priced into it. And if you tried to hedge out that, that minus 37%, it would probably cost you more than 2% to hedge it out. It might cost 3%. So he said his view was the market prices risk. The more risk you have, the more return you have. The less risk you have, the less return you have. If everybody got rid of the minus 37%, our return would not be as great. So basically what Harry Markowitz, who's one of the deepest thinkers our profession has or ever had, uh, his was, that's just part of the market. If you don't like that, get out of stocks and put some more in bonds and then you're gonna retire under a bridge.